In my recent Twitter poll, I realized a lot of people on Twitter haven't got anyone to socialize with in the lab. Almost half of these respondents, they have no social activity in the lab. I've met a lot of people who were helpful in my study and in the end of some of the coffee breaks, I have learned from them and I become more effective worker. These people are established scientists. They don't need anything from me. If I could use this wisdom and impact... Sorry, my cat's eating. Welcome back to PhD Coffee Time. This is the online community for you as PhD student to get motivation, peer support, and practical tips during your PhD. My mission of starting this channel is to help a lot of PhD out there who might feel isolated to feel more purposeful, more productive, and less stressed. And did you know, every time you watch towards the end of this video and click the like button, you are helping me to reach more other PhD that could need this video out there. So I really hope you can stick with my videos and have a coffee break during your research. There are a lot of unwritten syllabus for PhD student to succeed. The Dean of Graduate Research, Professor Tara Brabozon, has a very helpful YouTube channel. And recently she highlighted what are the qualities of the best PhD student. And it actually revealed why I make these videos because these qualities can be seen by the PI. It might be very hard for them to explicitly tell a PhD student what they can do and how they can become better in all these 10 aspects of the research. In my channel, I'm committed to break this down for you. This study has shown that postdoc engagement in the lab is actually a really important factor that predicts the skills and development of a young PhD student. I would like to provide my insights of serving as postdoc as well as being a PhD alumni to tell the story on how you could be more effective at your PhD studies. And my goal is my viewer would beat the odds of the tough reality in the academia competition. Because I'm a strong believer of small habits that make the biggest change. If you are committed to a healthy habit daily or weekly, this is going to add up and pay you dividends by the end of a year. So that's the philosophy behind my channel. This video is really made to say thank you to all of you who stick around and become a part of this community. You are the people who make this platform, this communication mechanism happens. And I'm just a liaison that bridges all of these questions together. And believe it or not, there are actually a lot of PI who are subscribing to this channel. And I hope by transparently talking about your question and your problem as PhD student, it's going to help communicate what needs to be done I know PIs are busy. I'm trying my best to make all of my video as concise as possible. So it could be making the positive changes needed. I make this channel as an authentic sharing, for example, in time management, project management, communication, presentation skills. There are a lot to learn, but nothing is written on stone. When I started the channel, I made a bunch of goal setting, time tracking, and agile project management video. I hope by the end of watching all of these videos, you will gain a lot more control to how disciplined you can be, persevere, and endure during your journey. There is an art to communicating with your busy PI. I also had a video about leading students and I know a lot of you have to take the role of a leader to move forward your productivity. So if you are leading any student in your research, that is a video for you. And I try to summarize my experience on what works the best and how to be proactive, enthusiastic and be a very self-actualized PhD student. 
And of course, most of you might know me through this popular video about OneNote, Sotero. But let me tell you, these two other videos on how to organize your files and how to organize your data and process it for biostatistical analysis. And a lot of time PhD require diligence to sit through data and make complex information organized and retrievable. Searching the web of science. So these boring video are made for that. And I hope you will go back to it at some point to sit through it with a coffee. Now I also have a bunch of videos to give PhD students some advice and support them on the journey. There are a few more videos explicitly addressing the concern of being in a new country and with the current situation of home office and COVID. And if you want some guideline on writing and presenting, I've made a few videos as well on how to write consistently and what are the tips on writing a proposal. How do I use Inkscape for making illustration for a diagram that is your figure one in your thesis, as well as how to write a protocol that you can efficiently remember all of the steps in your research and share it within your institution. I've spoken how I think is the best way to present scientific seminar. If you like my video and think my presentation style is refreshing, that's a video that you can learn in more detail how you can also present scientific data in a better refreshing way. I also talk about why we should publish paper. I know a lot of time we are feeling stressed about publication. And whenever you get lost, that's a video for you to go back to and get back to the motivating time of wanting to push yourself and publish. I have a few videos about career preparation. PhD in the end, not all of us become academic researcher and it is okay. So I have two versions and I'm sharing my resume and my CV for non-academic application and academic job application. So if you want some guideline and want to know how my CV look like, that's the place to look for it. Now, I also discuss what are the things you could do during your PhD to increase your cultural sensitivity, to improve your job readiness, preparing yourself with a habit of having 10% of your time during your PhD and improve skills that you are going to need in the future. So that's it, a quick recap on this year of PhD Coffee Times video. Thank you for sticking around and I have a favor to ask. I hope you will find the best one that you think I have made and send your preference to me by any social media platform and I would love to read them and improve my videos. And you're always welcome to comment on all of these videos so I will get more specific feedback from you guys. Thank you for being a part of this community. I meet you all at the comment section. Most of the advice out there says a YouTube video should never be spent on explaining who you are and why you are making videos. So I waited until this point to start this conversation. So I've already introduced a little bits and pieces of myself who I am, where did I graduate my PhD, and where I did my postdoc. But today, I really hope to dig deeper into why I started this channel and how you can help my mission. I have always wondered how science could be done better because postdoc, it was the darkest time of my life when I found myself not having a driver's license, isolated, and I didn't know to say hi and find friends until maybe one year later. It was the moment I felt the darkest point of my life that I realized simply because I want to do science and wishfully thinking a postdoc contract is going to put me on the right track is a false assumption. The first year was the lowest point, but after that, I put myself out there and I have met a bunch of really nice people, included me to coffees. I recreated my social circle. In PhD, I was always the liaison between disciplines. In Hong Kong, we, I was talking about in my 25 year old PhD video, how many nationality we have and all of these colleagues coming all over the world. That's changed 
When I was in postdoc, the people are local American, not a single Hong Kong person on that campus. And for those who wonder, my mother tongue is Cantonese, or Gong Gong Donghua. But all the people on campus who look like me, they are Mandarin speaker. They spoke in Mandarin. Uh, but my Mandarin sucks and people will be like, can you speak in English? We can, you can speak in English. And there are Chinese people who look exactly like me. And when I spoke in English, I also have an accent. So I felt like I don't belong anywhere. And for the first year, my friends and family were all 12 hours away from time zone. So every time when I get home, it's going to be too early or too late to call. A lot of time, the hard days become harder when you don't have supportive friends and families. After I got connected with the postdoc association and all of these workshops available for postdoc. Fast forward two years ago, I come to France. I also miss the workshops that we had in South Carolina because in France, there's no professional development workshops. There's no intentional mentoring sessions. There's no intentional working workshop session to improve your grant writing, to improve your presentation skills. Nobody ever talk about the skills that you will need as PhD, but they assume it from you. Both journey of postdoc in France and in America, I've met a lot of people who were helpful in my study and in the end of some of the coffee breaks, I've learned from them and I become more effective worker. These people are established scientists they don't need anything from me. If I could use this wisdom and impact more lives out there by paying things forward, that is the best way to thank these positive people in my life. I hope this video helps you. And if you have friends who want to get motivated and become more efficient PhD, please send them this video and introduce them to this community. And I hope this platform is going to be a supportive resource for you to grow as a PhD student. Welcome to 2020. Welcome to 2020. This is the first day of 2020. I wake up to 10 years of being in research. In this process, I have been thinking a lot about what I can contribute as a researcher working in the front line to this community. That's why I've thought about this YouTube channel, PhD Coffee Time, because I really have so much that I would like to share with all my friends who are out there doing PhD. There are so many little things that I have discovered that maybe is trivial to PI, but it makes a PhD stay much easier. For example, I have just recently learned to use conditional formatting on Excel and it makes my data look so much easier to read. Well, we were never having an Excel class in university. This is the point. We may have our first class honor in university degrees and we ended up in a graduate school program, but it takes a lot of technical help to be a good researcher and being an effective one. So I have a goal in 2020. I want to create content every week that is helpful to the community of PhD. This is my little bricks and when I get to finish my postdoc contract in April, I am also actively seeking for employment. But during this time, I have a little more free time in my hand and I really hope my work on the platform of YouTube is going to be transferable to many disciplines of researcher. And my dream is that a lot of students may find my advice helpful. Most of all, they don't feel isolated in a research environment, which it's easy to feel that way and we shouldn't be. That's my vision of this YouTube channel. I think it's a great way to communicate, document useful tips on tiny things that your advisor will, will have very little time to show you. That's it. So if you wish to have a postdoc like me in your lab, please subscribe to the channel. I hope that the process of working hard can be also inspiring. My goal is to have a few hundreds, oh, it's not a specific goal, 1,000 subscribers by the end of 2020. If you'd like to share more ideas on how you effectively do PhDs, the comment sessions I, I hope is a resource to everyone when all the smart people come together and comment on the videos and will give more advice. Okay. 
what is going on? Why someone's whistling in the back? Thank you for watching and I will see you the next time.